Hello everybody. The purpose of this video is to talk about a technique that we can use when solving equations that have fractions in them. This technique I'm going to show you is not something that has to be used all the time, but it's most certainly something that I would strongly recommend you learn because there are times when you can use it and it saves you a world of trouble. So you do the hard work ahead of time to learn this method, it will save you hard work down the line. Also, in the pretest that we just took, um, we demonstrated that some of us have a real struggle in working with fractions. This trick might help uh, for a lot of reasons. So, <clears throat> the trick is, to make all the fractions go away, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common multiple, or the lowest common denominator. So, 4 and 8. One way to think about this is, I multiply by a number that 8 goes into, that 4 also goes into. In this case, it happens to be 8. And notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to distribute the 8 before I actually do any multiplication. So we have 8 times 3 quarters plus 8 times 2x equals 8 times an eighth x minus 8 times 8. So that's the distributive property, but rather than multiply in my head and risk making mistakes, I distributed everything out first. Now, the first thing I need to deal with is 8 times 3 quarters. Depending on where you learned, there's different ways of doing this. For example, you could, some people like to put the 1 under the 8 and then multiply across, giving us 24 over 4, and that turns out to be 6. Personally, I have a preference for dividing before I multiply, because I'm going to get the same results, but I'll get smaller numbers. 4 goes into 8 twice, and so instead we're going to do 2 times 3, which of course is 6. Of course, there's also a common sense approach. Right here represents 8 rocks, or 8 dots, if you will. I want three out of every four, so here's one, two, three, I keep those, and then lose the fourth one, and then one, two, three, keep those, and lose the fourth one. I'm keeping three out of every four, which basically turns out to be six. Six is three quarters of eight. So we have memorized one technique, we have a better technique to memorize because it gives you better numbers, and here we have understanding. So here's method, here's comprehension. But I digress. Back to the problem. Three quarters of eight is six. 8 times 2x is 16x. 1 eighth of 8. If you had $8 and you took an eighth of it, that's $1. And 8 times 8 is 64. So now what we're going to do is uh, subtract x from both sides. Once that, we get 15x, and then the 1x is 0 over on this side, minus 64. 0 minus 64 is negative 64. Then we're going to add 6 to both sides and divide by 15. At this stage, a lot of students would go to a calculator because they don't know how to divide 70 by 15. We're trying to avoid calculators in the beginning here so we can get some of our numerical skills back where they need to be for high school level. So we're going to start with uh, 70 and 15 are both multiples of 5, so I'm just going to divide top and bottom by 5 here and get a reduced fraction, and it turns out to be negative 4 and 2 thirds. Now, in some algebra classes, we'd stop right there. I insist that we don't solve a problem until we've shown that that, pro that solution is, in fact, valid. So this might seem like painful busy work, but this is going to get easier over time. I'm going to take my solution and put it back in for x into the equation. Here's something I need to point out. Whenever I replace a variable with a value, I insist you always put parentheses around that value on the first step. That way it doesn't look like 1 eighth minus 14 thirds, it'll look like 1 eighth times 14 thirds. So anytime you replace a variable with a number, use parentheses and uh, continue working from that point. So this looks intimidating, but I'm just going to do what I know. 2 times 14 is 28, and 28 thirds is what I'm left with on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I'm going to reduce ahead of time. That is to say, 2 goes into 14 7 times, and 2 goes into 8 4 times. Now I have smaller numbers. 7 times 1 and 4 times 3 gives us the fraction 7 twelfths. We still have minus 8. My next objective is to find common denominators so that I can add the fractions on the left, common denominators so I can add or subtract the fractions on the right. And here, point out that I'm just multiplying by 1. 3 thirds is 1. 4 fourths is 1. So I'm not changing the value, I'm just multiplying by 1 so that the numbers look better. So instead of 3 fourths, I write its equivalent value 9 twelfths, 128 twelfths, here we have 7 twelfths and 96 twelfths, and we take 9 twelfths and subtract 112 twelfths for a grand total of 103 twelfths, negative, and then here, we do the same thing, and the point is, when x is negative 14 thirds, 
the value on the left is equal to the value on the right. So that's what the equation is asking for, is what value of x makes this a true statement? And the answer is negative 14 thirds. Another example, and I'll go through this one more quickly, is um, the, uh, uh, the fractions, uh, or the equation with the fractions, 3 halves n minus 8 thirds equals negative 29 over 12. And you want to work with this in this form, go ahead, but uh, um, for right now we're going to learn how to use the fraction busting technique. We're going to multiply both sides by the magic number. It's one number that both 2, 3, and 12 go into, and that happens to be 12. I distribute the 12 so I don't make any mistakes. And here, uh, 1 and a half of 12 is 18, and 32. So 18n minus 32 equals negative 29. We're going to add 32 to both sides and get 3. We're going to divide both sides by 18 and get that n is equal to 1 sixth. I better make sure I did my work right because I'm a little nervous about that fraction answer. So here, when I put in 1 sixth in parentheses where the x used to be, I reduce the fractions. 3 goes into 6 twice. We get 1 quarter. And then we have minus 8 thirds equals negative 29 twelfths. So find common denominators. And it all works out because if you have 3 twelfths and you take away 32 twelfths, you're left with a grand total of 29 twelfths negative. So um, please feel free, of course, to review this video um, um, as many times as it takes until you get the hang of this technique. Um, you will be asked to um, practice with uh, six equations, and that will be indicated online. Um, so have a great day.